morning, Ambassador. Hello, Good Mr. morning, President. Mr. President. Okay, we've got a booth assembled for you. We're going to debate over here. So, Ambassadors, I've uh, brought you here today. We're going to work on work on coming to a compromise here, meeting in the middle, try and reconcile our differences between Benjamin Franklin's life. Okay, and what would you guys like to speak about first? I think we should bring up Benjamin's eight-year contract. Okay, with his brother at there. Or should we say five-year? Sorry, I know, I know this is a, a stained history that it's we a touchy have. subject. Yes, yes. gets me down to the core. I'm sorry, Ambassador. What would what would you like to discuss? Let me, let me hear your grievances. Well, let us start off with the fact that he lied about doing the eight-year contract and only did five years. He took advantage of all the education that his brother gave him. This is true, but can you not also say that his brother mistreated him? And at the time, young Benjamin Franklin was unable to handle this betrayal, mistreatment, and he saw no option other than to run away. But that was a selfish option. He ran away for his own personal gain. This is true, but this is a small example. Young Benjamin Franklin was not as wise as his older counterpart, and old Benjamin Franklin, in his own autobiography, has uh, apologized for this and attempted to, attempted to reconcile his differences, and even apologized to his brother in later life. That's good. Therefore, on, on this point, I think that um, I think that we can see that Ben Franklin is um, is truly trying to reconcile his mistakes and uh, and work for the good. His saucy and provoking nature. I think he fixed that. Yeah. Okay, ambassadors, and uh, your next point. May we bring up his wife, Deborah, with whom which with whom he cheated on. I I understand. Um, it's a horrible fact of. Of, uh, the life of that time period, and um, I don't really have a have a response for Great Lord Franklin. Okay. So, um, are you saying that's excusable? I am You're not. Just let it slide. I'm not trying to excuse his actions. I'm simply saying that what he did was wrong, and I'm admitting. What about the fact that sense. while she was sick, he didn't go to help her? That's okay. All right. While, while she was sick, I believe that I believe that his his choice at the time may have been forced. He may have he may have felt that his diplomatic duties were more important. Or now, his other lovers. We all heard the stories. Um, he went to England for his own personal gain, for his own business, and left Miss Reed. At her home to marry another man. This is true. I, I cannot I cannot excuse Ben Franklin's actions here. I am My apologies. And a cheater. Cheaters never win. Don't press it. So Ambassador, we've uh, discussed two points of argument so far, and the battle still rages. Uh, Will we like to discuss anything else? How about his virtues? Yes. Or there lack thereof. It's thirteen virtues. Okay. Okay. Moral perfection. Okay, I, I have some points on this as well, so I would. Would you like to start or should no, I? You start. I, Mr. President. I think. Hold on. I would like to argue that um, that the very nature that he made these virtues, he's trying to better himself in in the eyes of his peers to serve as to serve as a role model. For these, for these people, helping them outwardly, he's, um, he's, he's progressing himself for the sake of progress to, to better himself as a man and to lead others to this better fulfillment, to see, to see what he can make of himself and to lead the way as an, an innovator and a leader to his peers. Whilst those are all valid points, Mr. President, I do believe that his traits were more egotistical and focused on the self rather than towards others. Okay. We believe. 
it seems like. Right. I, I see what you're coming from. I see that that you may believe that that his his list of traits is some sort of a, a false or a cover up. But but I believe that that the integrity of Mr. Franklin is is more than that. I believe that he would not do such a thing. He he was truly virtuous for the sake of being virtuous and for self betterment. And I would have to exactly. Self-betterment, and that's all. Not community betterment. He did not do anything for his community. I, I, his, one of his virtues was order. How does him keeping all his books and his thoughts in place help the community? I would, I would argue I that, see how. that the order, specifically, um, he could keep order within his community. For example, um, trash, not... Not having a scummy community, keeping it clean, pleasant. He cleans the community. And then within himself, he could order his papers and his workflow so as to create and benefit the community. This order would move forward into his work. What do you think? I um, I think we we can agree to disagree on this point. And um, I've said my piece, and I think you have yours. Okay, Mr. President. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. We uh. We've been making some great progress, but while we debate, the battle still rages. So we need to finish this this interview. We need to complete complete this process of peace between our factions. Please. <clears throat> Let's talk about his disregard for his son. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to say? I, I do. I think that while I can admit that your your points on the disowning of a son, thank you, is um it's tragic and it's poor that that it came to that. But you have to you have to see Benjamin Franklin's um, standpoint in this. You have to see how he, as a, a leader of the of the of the founding fathers, a founder of the nation, has a son who directly conflicts what he's trying to get across. This this would have ruined him. It, it can't. It can't be reconciled. Like yeah. How can we live in a country where our fathers don't even love their own sons? I don't believe that Ben Franklin didn't love his son. Dis disowned. He disowned yeah, him. That's true. We're all disowning each other. How about the great movie that came out about eight hundred years ago, <laughs> The Patriot, with Mel Gibson? Mel Gibson's son, Heath Ledger, joined the Continental Army against his wishes in the... Gabriel. What? That was the son's name. Gabriel. Gabriel, also known as Heath Ledger. And he joined the Continental Army against Mel Gibson's wishes. And Mel Gibson supported him and loved him. This, this is true. I, I, I can see your point. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ambassador, I, I have one last point, and then we can um, wrap up our interview. We can hopefully bring some peace to the situation. Uh, I'd like to talk about Ben Franklin as the originator of the American dream, and how he started from a poor, large family, and worked his way to a prominent man within, within America, starting the country, being influential throughout all of, of the continent. So Benjamin Franklin saw his life improve through through progress, through through opportunity and through pursuit of, of his dream. And so he, I believe, wishes to pass on this this success, this passion and this this fulfillment in his life to others in generosity through 
to help through his writings and his inventions. Uh, just so the the lords of the Gilded Age, Rockefeller, Carnegie, were from here, um, would do the same, creating projects and public works to benefit to benefit others. That that way, I see that Ben Franklin was a a great man who helped all people. I think you need to take into account that Mr. Franklin was a bit of an elitist. I believe it was in his autobiography that he mentioned that it would be suitable to make enlightened laws for enlightened men. And then he compared common law to common man. He created the distinction between an enlightened man such as himself and a commoner such as my thrice great uncle John Smith. I understand. Um, that's not to say, though, that a greater man cannot help the common man. I understand your point. No, that's a... Do you like apples? Yeah. How do you like those apples? Thank you. I like those apples a lot. Please push them. Um, ambassadors, I'm glad we could sit down today. I, uh, I enjoyed our discussion. I'm glad we could uh, stay mature about this, talk man to men, work on our differences between our factions. I know. I'd like to shake your hands. Wish you all a great day. Thank I hope you. a speedy end to this, to this war. I'll show you how. Good advice. Long live President Obama, the point is higher. Double spectacles 
and serve it for distant objects as well as near ones, making my eyes as useful as they ever were. Uh, is that not for personal gain? Riddle me this, Crixus. Doesn't your mother wear bifocals? Oh, you see, my mother is dead, Crixus. Will you deny that Benjamin Franklin invented the odometer? Oh, but do you see why he invented the odometer? Yes, I do and see why. And his brain is postmaster general. He made the odometer to track his mileage, oh. his own mileage, to get the fastest route of mail. While he was doing what? Delivering mail to the others, huh? Ah, oh, but does that have to do with the odometer in which he measured his dime? Do you like the mail that you get, huh? And the mail that you get would not be arriving if it weren't for Benjamin Franklin. Oh, I think not, you young fool. Yeah! Oh! oh! I've had enough of this. Mm. Well, ah! Never heard of you, Bill. No, no, it's possible. Ah, tell me, Chris. Do you have penile problems? No problem that I will not disclose. It. Oh. Now let's discuss these penile problems that which you have brought up. Why? Did Ben Franklin have penile problems? No, what? in fact, his brother had penile problems. And he invented a more comfortable urinary catheter, as you might recall, to help his brother. Not for his own sake. Benjamin Franklin's PPU was in perfect shape. Well, let's see for a second. Was he not doing this for his own brother? Is this not personal gain on his level? No! To achieve better relations with family! No! Who he so heavily disregarded in yeah. life! No! Yes! No! You are weak! You are weak! <laughs>